Welcome to this week's webisode of The Better Half. My name is Katie Hartley and I have a special guest host with me today, Vince Murata from ArizonaSports.com. Welcome, Vince. Thank you. I'm decidedly not Kendra D. St. Albans. Just so we get that out of the way you early. Are, yeah. You are not. Yeah. You are correct. <laughs> well, let's get right into it. The biggest local sports story this week is Arizona hiring coach Rich Rodriguez for their football program. Of course, losing Mike Stoops earlier this season. So, Vince, what do you think? Good fit? Bad fit? Well, you'd say like they lost Mike Stoops, like they just can't find him. They, they booted <laughs> him to the curb. I think this is actually a good splash hire for Arizona. I really do. Rich Rodriguez, big name. It all depends, though, results-wise. Are they getting West Virginia Rich Rodriguez, where he had great success, four Big East titles, or are they getting Michigan Rich Rodriguez, in which he groveled for his job on his way out the door by quoting Josh Groban songs? I mean, it all depends on that. <laughs> Uh, but from a from an initial standpoint, good hire for for U of A. Yeah, I like it. I am a fan. I am a Wildcat alumni, so I give it two thumbs up right now. I figure it actually can't get any worse than it is right now. And Rich Rodriguez is 48 and 26 overall, not bad, especially compared to Mike Stoops. But I'll ask the question now: ASU looking at possibly losing Dennis <laughs> Erickson as well. Do you think that this hire of Rich Rodriguez puts pressure on the Sun Devils? Um, I think there's pressure on the Sun Devils to do the right thing. It just, I, I happen to think it's coincidence that Arizona is going through a coaching change at the same time that ASU might be. I don't think Arizona State can be influenced on what goes on down south. Oh, you know, we Sun Devils aspire to a higher <laughs> standard. Uh, you know, like I said earlier, it was a good splash hire for Arizona. If ASU does make that decision to make a coaching change, there could be a little bit of unrelated pressure to, to try to match that from a lot of people in, in the state. Mm -hmm. Well, great game this weekend of those two schools. No. U of A <laughs> taking on ASU at Sun Devil Stadium. I was there. I loved it. I turned my Wildcats on the whole time. I think that it was the biggest college football upset of the weekend, ASU was favored by 11 points at home, and U of A came out and I think thumped them, at least in the fourth quarter, which I love to see. Um, but what I liked to see the most was the Wildcats actually kind of going back to running the ball. I think they had 101 yards rushing. It was a good performance by Arizona. I thought they played well. I thought ASU uh, did not play well, obviously, tackling-wise <laughs> in the fourth quarter. Upset, yes, not the biggest upset uh, of, of the weekend, though. You don't have to go far to find the biggest upset. Go up to Eugene, Oregon, where USC beat Oregon in Eugene, where mm -hmm. that doesn't happen very much. 19 straight uh, games uh, in conference, they had won 21 straight home games. USC pulls off the upset, knocks Oregon from the BCS title picture. And you got to give credit to Lane Kiffin. That the team is playing for nothing at USC, and they went into Oregon, and they uh, they played well. It's a good football team at USC, and they should be in the Pac-12 championship game. We know they can't be. Yeah, and, and I agree with that, too. It, that was an, another great game. But some things that maybe weren't so great that we saw in the NFL this weekend um, will wrap up with the biggest <laughs> flubs of the weekend. And there was a lot of them. There was a lot of them to choose from. The first one is from D'Angelo Hall after the overtime loss to the Dallas Cowboys, he was quoted as saying, the way I'm playing right now, they need to cut me because I'm definitely not worth what I'm getting. <laughs> what do you think about this one, Vince? Uh, somewhat refreshing, honesty-wise, <laughs> but he might have taken it a step too far. You might want to come out and say, you know what, I didn't play very well, but you don't want to give anybody the idea to cost you your job. Uh, yeah. might have taken it a little bit too far. I have to agree with that. I would like to have seen him say, maybe I should try a little harder next time, but <laughs> that's just asking for trouble. Um, another one from that game actually was quarterback Tony Romo calling a timeout just after the head coach of the Washington Redskins calling a timeout. Vince? Uh, could have cost the, the, the Cowboys. Dallas didn't have any timeouts left, so Romo got away with one. I'll pin the blame on Mike Shanahan for actually calling the timeout. I'm not a big fan of icing the kicker in that situation. It, I think it works less uh, frequently than a lot of people think, including Mike Shanahan, so I'll pin the blame on him. We'll, we'll leave Romo alone for a week. Okay, I, I like that. As a Cowboys fan, I'm also good with leaving Tony <laughs> Romo out of it. And the last flub of the weekend is from Deshaun Jackson flipping the ball after he caught um, after he caught a reception, flipping it at the Giants coordinator and getting a 15-yard penalty for taunting. That, that to me is just ridiculous and it just shows how undisciplined some of these young guys can be. Deshaun Jackson is the biggest hot dog in the NFL, there's no doubt about it. He's also <laughs> probably the most uh, disappointing player in the National Football League this year. Mm -hmm. 35 catches, last week he misses the Cardinals game because he sleeps through a team meeting. 
Then he draws a taunting penalty. The only good thing Deshaun Jackson has done in the last year was befriending the kid who got bullied on The View. Do you remember that? Other, other than that, yeah. it's been a bad year for Deshaun Jackson <laughs> all the way around. Right on. Well, we are out of time. Vince, thank you so much for joining thank us you. this it was week fun. on The Better Half. You can follow Vince on Twitter at Vince Murata, and you can follow me at FunKatie620. We'll be back next week for another webisode of The Better Half.